Hello, you are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's tutorial. Today, we want to continue our journey looking at arterial blood supply to the upper limb. We already seen the initiation of the arterial blood supply to the upper limb being coming from this, I mean, the subclavian artery. Yeah, so please, if you not watch the video on the subclavian artery, please do so to get, you know, understanding of whatever we are going to go through as far as the arterial blood supply to the upper limb is concerned. But if you remember, we said that with the help of an important muscle, being the scalenous anterior muscle, we're able to divide, you know, the, I mean, subclavian artery into three parts, you know, the proximal part, the deep part, and of course the distal part. And then we said that for the first part, being the proximal part, Yes, with the use of, you know, the mnemonic vitamin, we should be able to remember, yes, all these branches, you know, V for vertebral artery, I for, you know, internal mammary artery or internal thoracic artery, C for, of course, you know, thyro cervical trunk, okay? And then we said that even with the thyro cervical trunk, with the use of mnemonic sit, we are able to have, you know, the branches, you know, as for suprascapular artery, you know, I for inferior thyroid artery, and then T for transverse, you know, cervical artery, or also can also call the superficial, you know, cervical artery. Then, of course, the second part had just a branch, which was actually deep to what we call the scalenous anterior muscle, and that, that one with the mnemonic, you know, CD, okay, we should be able to get the branches of the second part, and of course, the third part. So C for actually the coastal, you know, cervical trunk, give it a deep, you know, cervical branch, of course, the supreme or the highest intercostal, you know, artery. Then D for actually the third part, the D, the third part, yes, having also a branch coming from what we call the dorsal scapular artery. So please, if not watch that video, please do so, so that I can get complete understanding of whatever you'll be going through. Now, for today, yes, we want to actually continue. We said that, yes, beyond, you know, the outer border of the first rib, the subclavian artery changes its name, and this time around, we now call it the axillary artery. Because, of course, we are actually in the armpit area. You know, the armpit is known as axilla, you know, the axillary area, and, of course, therefore, the artery over there will be called axillary artery. So, without further ado, yes, let's go through this, and then, of course, have, you know, good insight regarding the branches, the course and of course relations of the axillary artery. So there we are. This is the first rib. Okay, this is the rib one. And we said that there's a subclavian artery beyond okay the level of outer border of the first rib all the way from here up to what we call the inferior border of what we call the teres major muscle. We are going to have what we call the axillary artery. Axillary artery. Okay. Now this axillary artery too, yes, also with the help of a muscle, you're also able to divide it into what we call three parts. And these three parts, yes, with the help of this muscle, known as the pectoralis minor muscle, you know, it's having, you know, insertion onto the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula. This is the pectoralis minor muscle. And therefore, we can also divide this axillary artery into three parts. Yeah, just like what we found in the subclavian artery, yes, from the outer border, okay, of the first rib to what we call the superior border or the upper border of what we call the pectoralis minor muscle, we are going to have the first part. We are going to have the first part, okay, the extent of the first part. And then from actually the uh, outer, I mean, from the superior border, to what we call the inferior border of the pectoralis minor muscle we're also going to have the second part being the deep part and then from what we call the inferior border of the pectoralis minor muscle all the way to what we call the inferior border of the teres major muscle okay we are going to have what we call the third part of the axillary artery okay so there's the distal part okay proximal part and deep part so this time around, what happens is that to get just get an overview of these uh, branches, what happens is that the first part is given just a branch, second part is given two branches, and third part is given us three branches. So it's pretty simple. Unlike you know the subclavian artery, in which the first part gave three branches, second part one branch, and then third part a branch. For the axillary artery, the first part is given one branch, second part two branches, and then third part three branches. So that is what you know you have to know. 
Now, there is a simple mnemonic which I'm going to tell you, and this simple mnemonic is Hotel Spa, Hotel Spa, and H, okay, in the hotel, you know, actually stands for the branch that we are going to find in the first part of the axillary artery, and that's the superior thoracic artery or the supreme thoracic artery, or you can also call it the highest thoracic artery, highest thoracic artery, okay? Now, O, we are not going to have anything for it, but T, of the hotel so t of the hotel will be coming from one of the branches of the second part and that is what we call the thoracic acromial trunk okay thoracic acromial trunk and then e of the hotel doesn't have a branch but the l of the hotel will give us what we call the lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery okay so that is one thing that you have to know lateral thoracic artery so I say hotel spa. Now the spa, okay, the SPA is giving telling us the three branches coming from the third part of the axillary artery. And S is actually for the subscapular artery. The subscapular artery will also give off some branch known as you know the circumflex you know scapular artery. And then of course it's also give off this branch being the you know the thoracodorsal artery. We actually go through these ones. And then the other two branches, you know, P for posterior, okay, circumflex humeral artery. And then A for anterior circumflex humeral artery. For hotel spa, you should be able to tell us all the branches of the Azari artery. Well, I also found another, you know, mnemonic for this. And it says, sometimes life seems a pain. Sometimes life seems a pain. So that S, okay, will be the supreme or the superior uh, you know thoracic okay and then T for of course the thoracic chromial that's for the times and then L for life okay the life the lateral thoracic and then S you know for what we call the subscapular then A for you know anterior circumflex humeral artery and then P for posterior circumflex humeral artery. So these ones are actually going to give us help us know the branches of the subclavian artery in total. So I'm actually going to go through the first part of the axillary artery. Yes, so as we've already indicated, we know the extent of the first part of the axillary artery. Now the first part of the axillary artery, yes, will give off this highest thoracic artery or the supreme, I mean thoracic artery, which will run downwards, okay, actually between what we call the pectoralis, you know, minor muscle as well as the pectoralis major muscle. Now you know the pectoralis minor muscle. Now there's a bigger muscle which overlies this pectoralis minor muscle, being the pectoralis major muscle. Okay, so by so doing, this highest thoracic, you know, artery will give off some branches to supply the pectoralis, you know, muscles. But at the same time, yes, as it moves downwards, it actually divides into two to give off two branches, which we call them, you know, the superficial, you know, uh, two, you know, anterior intercostal, you know, arteries. So that is one thing that, you know, we have to know. Okay, and those two intercostal arteries will supply the superficial areas of the first two intercostal arteries. So that is what we call the highest, okay, thoracic artery. But remember that the first part of the, I mean, subclavian artery, sorry, the first part of the axillary artery will have some relations which we have to know. So anteriorly, yes, of course, because there's a bigger muscle, so it means that we are going to have the pectoralis major muscle actually overlying this muscle. Okay, so that is one thing that apart from that, we're going to have even the cephalic vein also being related to it anteriorly. Then for the posterior relations, yes, it will be related to actually the first digitation of what we call serratus anterior muscle. Now remember, now when I reflect, okay, the most superficial muscle will be serratus, sorry, will be the pectoralis major muscle. When I cut and reflect it, I'll get what you call uh, pectoralis minor muscle. When I remove it, then I'm going to see what we call the digitations of what we call the serratus anterior muscle. Actually, the first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle will be related to the first part of the uh, axillary artery, okay, posteriorly. And then, of course, yes, again, also be related to the nerve that supplies the serratus anterior, you know, muscle, being that long thoracic nerve, long thoracic nerve.
okay so we have to actually know these relations then laterally it will be related to actually the three cores of the brachial plexus okay so that's one thing the medial cord you know lateral cord the posterior cord of the brachial plexus will be related to the first part of the axillary artery laterally however in a constant relation which we are going to see for every part of the axillary artery okay we will have this this vein okay running alongside its artery being the axillary vein so axillary vein will always be in constant relation being medial to what we call the axillary artery which means that the axillary artery is lateral to the axillary vein so that is one thing that you have to know regarding the relations of the first part of the axillary artery now one thing that you have to know is that yes in the axilla there's a sheet okay or there's a fascia which actually yes encircles okay the structures which some of the structures in the axillary area and these structures are actually what we call the axillary artery and the course of the brachial plexus okay you have to actually you know know these ones but this one the relation that we're actually showing here is actually showing you the second part of the axillary artery because we said that the you know we are able to I mean give the nomenclature of the course of the brachial plexus with the help of the axillary artery actually this is the second part of the axillary artery okay so this is the axillary artery okay sitting there and then as you go this way now you can see this the humerus head of the humerus which is more laterally placed okay and then you know you can also see now look at this you see this the pectoralis major muscle and this is actually the pectoralis minor muscle they are a bit anteriorly placed okay they are a bit anterior place and of course as you move this way now you get to know that there's the rib you are getting the sternal area okay so this over here will be more medial okay will be more medial because we will see that even the azari vein is medial to the azari artery so here we have the lateral cord because related to this i mean head of femoral which is lateral place lateral cord of brachial plexus then we're going to have the posterior cord and of course the medial cord of the brachial plexus will be in relation to these ones but what's important i want to show you here is that the brachial plexus the course of the brachial plexus together with the axillary artery are sheathed within this fascia which we call it you know the axillary sheet axillary sheet but the important thing to note is that the axillary vein is not a content of the axillary sheet it lies outside the you know axillary you know uh, sheet okay to help in actual expansion okay when during actually what we call venous retain venous ret retain now remember that when we look at the deep veins of the lower limb actually in the leg region we'll get to know that they are in the same vascular sheet as their arteries so of course the pulsations that will actually take place okay in the arteries can help in venous retain but in the area of the axilla is not the case azari vein lies outside the azari sheet so we go to the second part of the axillary artery. We said the second part of the axillary artery, you know, is actually going to be, you know, um, deep to what we call the pectoralis, you know, uh, minor muscle, pectoralis minor muscle. So it means that by way of relation, anteriorly to be related to, of course, the pectoralis minor muscle, as well as, of course, the pectoralis major muscle, because pectoralis major muscle will overlie the pectoralis minor muscle. Then, at the posterior aspect behind this one we are going to have what you call the posterior cord of the brachial plexus yes it's not surprising because this is the second part of the subclavian artery so it means the posterior cord of the brachial plexus will relate to it actually posteriorly then on the lateral aspect okay so laterally we are going to have even in the posterior part yes we are going to have also even the subclavius muscle as well as even the joint capsule of you know the shoulder joint so that's one thing that you have to know apart from you know the posterior cord of the brachial plexus you have to know that here's the subclavius muscle you know apart from that even the joint capsule of the shoulder joint will relate to it actually posteriorly then laterally it will be related to of course the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and then medially by the medial cord of the brachial plexus but i told that there's a constant relation okay throughout the entire course of the axillary artery being the sub uh, being the axillary vein so the axillary vein will relate to the you know uh, second part of the of the axillary artery also medially apart from you know the medial cord of the brachial plexus now one thing that you have to you know know over here is that yes this artery is given out two branches yes with the help of the mnemonic 
yes you know hotel spa okay so t e l okay tell the t and then the l will give us the branches so the first branch yes t is the turaku acromial trunk turaku acromial trunk so we're actually going to see all the branches that the turaku acromial trunk is going to give and then we're also going to have the lateral pector lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery so that is how you know we are actually going to you know see it but you realize that this second part yes the actually the turaco acromial you know branch actually originates a bit you know superior okay to what we call the pectoralis you know uh, the upper border of the pectoralis uh, minor muscle okay the turaco acromial Okay, that's what happens and it's actually pierce what we call the clavi pectoral fascia i'm going to show you the clavi pectoral fascia and from there it will give off these branches after piercing the clavi pectoral fascia it's able to give off these branches okay anteriorly so it will pierce it this way and then give off those branches and of course the lateral pectoral you know artery actually originates somewhat you know at the lower level okay to what we call the pectoralis minor muscle so it's very simple for you to identify these you know structures okay although they are a bit puzzling in real time sections but for you to if you're able to identify the pectoralis minor muscle just on the upper portion we are going to have what you call the trunk the tyro uh, uh, turaco acromial trunk and then at the lower level we are going to have the lateral thoracic artery now for the lateral thoracic artery yes we actually arise at the lower border okay of what we call the pectoralis minor muscle and it will run alongside you know along what we call the serratus anterior muscle i'm going to show you all those ones and then to supply you know the pectoralis major and minor muscle as well as of course the serratus you know anterior muscles give some supply to it but importantly in females this artery is now this artery in females is very large okay so that it's able to give off some branches to what we call the mammary gland to a lateral aspect of the mammary gland after all it's called the lateral thoracic artery and that is why we also call the you know lateral thoracic artery you know the external mammary artery so we'll actually go through these ones so there we are this is the clavi pectoral fascia okay now we are going to have what we call the subclavius muscle over here now we have the pectoralis minor muscle over here there's a thicken fascia okay in between these two areas that thicken fascia is known as the clavi okay from the clavicular area and then to the pectoral area so clavi pectoral fascia and we are saying that yes this you know thoracoacromial trunk will actually pierce through it but it's not only the thoracoacromial trunk which pierces through the clavi pectoral fascia so it could be a question you have to know that apart from you know the thoracoacromial trunk we are going to have what we call the lateral you know pectoral nerve okay lateral pectoral nerve as well as of course the cephalic vein and of course some lymphatic you know vessels may also go through it so mainly yes turaco you know or lct yes lateral pectoral nerve t turaco you know acromial nerve and c cephalic you know vein you know together with some lymphatic osphorus you know going through it so that's a clavi pectoral fascia so between the pectoral minor muscle and of course the subclavius muscle you have to actually appreciate this one now we said that yes after piercing you know the clavi pectoral fascia then it gives off you know four you know branches so depending on where these branches are actually moving then we are going to give it its name now this one too there's a simple mnemonic for us to know help us remember all these ones and it is apc docs apc docs now in ghana there's a political party called apc yeah there's even a church called apc so with apc docs you should be able to i mean remember all these you know structures or you can have this mnemonic all dogs can pee all dogs can pee okay all dogs can pee can also help you in that regard so i'm going with apc dogs so a is for acromial okay acromial branch okay here we are this is the acromial branch okay so the acromial branch it tells you that it's going to i mean supply you know the acromial process of you know the scapula okay going to the scapula supplying the acromial part of the scapula so there's the acromial branch okay then apart from that we are also going to have the so that's uh, a and then p is for pectoral okay pectoral branch 
okay we have going to have pectoral branch which is also of course going to give off some other branches okay so this pectoral branch of course supply the pectoralis minor and of course major muscles okay this is the pectoral branch and then c is for clavicular branch so it's going to supply you know the shafts of the clavicular area of course as well as you know the subclavius muscle okay gives off some you know supply to these areas then of course the the docks will be the deltoid branch will be the deltoid branch now uh, remember the deltoid branch is supposed to be a direct branch coming from this area yes but it can also come from the acromial branch okay and then supply that one so that is what uh, we have to know regarding you know the turaco acromial branch turaco acromial branch okay so that is that one after piercing the clavicular fascia it gives off these three branches all right now the next one that we are going to see which is also part of the second branch is actually the lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery now, i told you that if i cut okay now look at the, the, the scapula below the scapula taking origin from the scapula you know medial to test of the scapula subscapular fossa we are going to have the subscapularis muscle now the subscapularis muscle yes you can also call the forgotten tendon now if i cut the pectoralis major muscle i reflect it and i cut the pectoralis minor and reflect it then i'm going to have the digitations okay of the serratus anterior muscle you know having that kind of sawtooth appearance serratus anterior muscle so we are saying that this uh, lateral thoracic artery as i already indicated will run you know along you know the uh, the digitations of what we call the serratus anterior muscle okay to supply the serratus anterior muscle itself yes of course also give supply to what we call the pectoralis major and minor muscles as well okay and because of course the breasts will be you know around this area you know of course you know breasts will be between the second rib to up to the sixth rib so the breasts will be around this area so it means that it's also going to give off some branches to supply the, the breast area okay to supply the breast area and therefore that's why i told you that we can also call the external mammary artery so by so doing it will form a great anastomosis with the internal mammary artery to supply you know the lateral aspects of you know the breast area actually you know you can see that running alongside will be the nerve to what we call the uh, the uh, serratus anterior muscle and that nerve is the long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve okay so that is that one now so we go to the third part of the axillary artery so we said that the third part of the axillary artery will continue from actually the lower border of you know the uh, pectoralis minor muscle up to you know of course the lower border of the teres major muscle now this artery yes will have some important relations you know anteriorly yes again it will be related to the pectoralis major muscle yes apart from that it will also be related to of course you know the medial roots of the median nerve now this time around it's not about the course the course were related here this time around we are going to see the branches okay of what we call the brachial plexus and anteriorly we are going to have what we call the medial root of the break uh, of the median nerve remember that the median nerve we have the lateral root and of course the medial root okay so the medial root of the median nerve will relate to the third part of the axillary artery actually anteriorly and then posteriorly okay it will be related to of course the subscapularis you know muscle subscapularis muscle okay the forgotten tendon that's the forgotten tendon then we're going to have also the small dorsi yes actually at the lower level we are going to have what you call the teres major muscle okay at the lower level right so these are how we are going to actually look at it then of course even apart from that of course the azari you know uh, uh nerve as well as of course the radial nerve okay will also be related to it you know actually laterally sorry posteriorly then for the lateral relations yes we know that we are going to have this muscle over here being the coracobrachialis muscle actually taking origin from a tip of coracal process okay inserting on a you know medial shaft okay of the humerus we are going to have the coracobrachialis muscle also relating laterally 
then apart from that you know the biceps you know also as well as, well as you know the humerus okay will be related to it you know laterally then we will actually be knowing that yes even the lateral roots of the median nerve as well as the musculocutaneous nerve will relate to it laterally and then medially okay at the medial aspects as well we are going to also going to have relation with what we call the ulnar nerve yes as already been uh, apart from that even the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm so you have to actually know some of the relations okay that you know we are going to find regarding these ones so remember that if it is beyond the second part then we are actually looking at the branches of the brachial plexus having relation to the third part of the azari artery so this time around yes continue with the mnemonic hotel spa so the spa is going to tell us the three branches of the third part of the axillary artery and s you know will be actually the i mean the subscapular artery okay so i'm actually going to go through that one then a for anterior and b for posterior circumference you know humeral arteries so there we are um, with the third part of the axillary artery yes we are going to have one of them importantly okay this one over here being what we call the subscapular artery the subscapular artery now the subscapular artery yes who originate now you can see that it's originated deep to this one the ventral aspect of the scapula where of course we know the muscle over there will be the subscapularis muscle so it will originate from the inferior border of the subscapularis muscle okay and it will actually run along you know the lateral border of the scapula to terminate actually at the inferior angle of the scapula but as it runs it gives off some branches so importantly to give off this branch okay look at where the cursor is so this is actually the subscapular artery as it curves this way okay it gives off this branch but one thing that you have to know is that yeah this branch that it gives will actually pierce through what we call the i mean the upper you know uh, triangular intermuscular space okay we we'll actually pierce through the upper intermuscular space triangular intermuscular space so i'll actually show you that one but one thing that you know you have to know is that this one you know because it is wrapping around it we're going to call it you know the circumflex scapular artery circumflex scapular artery okay we we'll pierce the clavi pectoral sorry we we'll pierce i mean we we'll go through actually what we call the upper you know uh, intermuscular space triangular intermuscular space okay that's one thing that you have to know okay so it will actually wind around yes as you can see and then give off several branches to supply you know the subscapularis area as well as even give off some branches to the i mean the the supra scapula i mean supra spinal tooth you know muscle area but it's actually form a great anastomosis you know around the scapula area okay to help in that regard now the other one which continues from the subscapular uh, i mean artery will be what we call the you know the the dorsal scapula you know artery dorsal scapula artery okay will be the dorsal scapula artery so um that is what we are going to find okay around the lateral border of you know the scapula these are the two main branches which will be coming from what we call the sorry subscapular artery the circumflex okay subscapular scapular artery and then the dorsal scapular artery dorsal scapular artery you have to know actually these ones now the other muscle which yes let me actually show you before i come here okay so the other mass the other artery which you know we're actually going to see will be this one okay and this one let me even show you this one now running anterior okay this one is actually the dorsal aspect okay because you can see the spine of the scapula so running actually at the posterior aspect okay is the posterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery so it's actually run you know alongside what we call the azari nerve okay to pierce through what we call the quadrangular space okay we actually go through the quadrangular space to reach the posterior you know okay so it goes through this way so to reach actually the posterior aspect of the surgical neck okay this area is the surgical neck okay but actually so we have a great anastomosis with the other artery which you can see here running anterior to it the other artery running anterior 
to the surgical neck okay that's the posterior view so run anterior to it is the anterior circumflex humeral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery now get to know that even the anterior circumflex humeral artery will give off a branch which you call the ascending branch of arterial circumflex humeral artery now if you remember the anterior aspect there will be two tubercles greater and lesser tubercles and in between them will be the inter uh, tubercular sulcus or the biceptal sulcus we're calling it the biceptal sulcus because of course the tendon of the long head of bicep brachii muscle okay coming from actually the you know supraglenoid tubercle actually runs through it and apart from that the tendon sheet will also be there tendon sheets of the you know the long head of the bicep brachii muscle will also run through it but in addition the third content of the biceptal groove although we can't see it over here will be what we call the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery so the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery will be running along this way to actually give some supply to what we call the deltoid area to actually the shoulder joint area okay that's one thing that you know you have to know now of course the contents are actually stabilized by what we call the transverse humeral ligament okay so in another section we actually look at all these ones so that is one thing now for the posterior circumflex humeral artery yes it will also give off a branch with the descending branch okay it also gives off what we call descending you know circumflex uh descending branch of what we call the posterior circumflex you know humeral artery so we actually look at all these ones so that is one thing that you have to know that with the third part of the axillary artery yes we are going to have three branches we are going to have the subscapular artery that's actually the largest okay that's actually the largest then immediately it's going to give off two branches being the you know scapular circumflex or the circumflex scapular artery and then of course it also give off you know the thoracic you know dorsal artery okay thoracic dorsal artery so these are the two branches from the subscapular artery and then the other two branches okay from the third part will be the posterior and of course anterior circumflex humeral arteries so spa for the mnemonic to help in that regard so I actually want to show you these ones that in the scapular area okay as well as we relating to what we call the plasma portion of the you know humerus there are three spaces okay that we find over there and these spaces are yes we are going to have what we call the uh, upper triangular space upper triangular space so I told you that the upper triangular space will be pierced okay by what you call the you know circumflex humeral artery sorry circumflex scapular artery circumflex scapular artery not humeral circumflex scapular artery okay but remember that the circumflex scapular artery is even a branch of the subscapular artery the other branch being the tracheodorsal artery which will run along the of course lateral border of the scapula okay it will go through or it will pierce through what we call the upper triangular space upper triangular space or simply we call the triangular space simply triangular space okay so that is one thing that you have to know now there is another space okay which uh, i told you that yes the posterior you know circumflex humeral artery will actually run through okay to reach the posterior aspect of the surgical neck but it doesn't go through it alone it goes through with the axillary nerve that space i told you is the quadrangular space it's four-sided quadrangular space so we say that this quadrangular so let me actually show you the borders of this upper triangular space that we have so the borders are yes now you can see that there's a humerus so this humerus is laterally okay oriented so the inferior border will be actually the upper border of the teres major muscle then of course uh, sorry medially it will be related to what we call the um, over here we are going to have what we call the teres minor muscle okay the lower border of the teres minor muscle will be related to it okay and then of course you know laterally it will be related to what we call the proximal portion of what we call the long head of the triceps you know brachii muscle we know the long head will be originating somewhere from the infragranoid tubercle so running this way 
long head of the triceps brachii muscle. So these ones will be the boundaries of the upper triangular space. Now for the quadrangular space, yes, at the superior aspects, we are going to have what, of course, you know, the teres, you know, minor muscle. Okay, lower border of the teres minor muscle will be related to it. Okay, superiorly. And then of course, medially, it will be related to the proximal portion, okay, of what we call the long head of the triceps brachii muscle, okay. Then inferiorly, it will be related to what we call the teres major muscle, okay. That's the superior border of the teres major muscle. And then of course, laterally, okay, it will be related to actually the shaft, shaft of the humerus the most proximal shaft of the humerus as well as of course the surgical neck of the humerus of the humerus so get to know that its contents are two okay apart from the posterior circumflex humeral artery there will also be azari nerve then of course there's another i mean triangular space which we call the lower triangular space or simply you can call it triangular interval triangular interval so i'm saying that the upper triangular space you can simply call it you know the triangular space the lower triangular space you can simply call it the triangular interval so if you see these things you should be able to tell the distinction triangular interval now this triangular interval here yeah, superiorly it will be bonded by what you call the teres major muscle lower part of the teres major muscle then at the medial border will be by the long head of what we call the triceps brachii muscle and of course laterally by the shaft of you know the humerus plasma shaft of the humerus so these are how we are going to look at it but even apart from that there will be some portion coming from what we call the short head so the lateral head of what we call the triceps brachii muscle triceps brachii muscle okay now because here we have the radial group, we're going to have the spiral group we got a spiral group okay the content will be two okay so the spiral group content will go through this triangular interval or the lower triangular space and they are the radial nerve as well as the profunda brachii artery so when we look at you know blood supply to the brachium to the arm we actually look at all these ones so these are the three spaces okay that we have you know regarding what we call the i mean the scapula okay as well as the humeral prosma humeral area i hope you find this tutorial helpful okay now use the mnemonic to help you understand all these ones so that at the end of the day you can you know remember them in your examinations we actually go through of course the blood supply to of course the arm and of course to the forearm talking about the brachial artery you know talking about you know the radial and of course ulnar arteries and then we actually end with that of the upper limb looking at the arterial supply to what we call the palm area being the superficial palmar arch and the deep palmar arch all right i hope you know you find it helpful make sure that you know you subscribe to the channel of course you know if it's helpful to you make sure you like it and then we actually take it from there may god richly bless you